Let's do some other stories now. The Bank of Ghana says it will crack the whip on individuals and companies that transact business in foreign currency. In a statement, the central bank warns it is against the law to do so, as the Ghana city remains the only legal tender. This move comes amidst measures already rolled out to hold the city from further depreciation against the dollar and major trading currencies. The BOG last month announced it was pumping about $2 billion into the system in response to the high demand for the dollar. Now, this was after it increased the monetary policy rate by 250 basis points uh, to 17%. Already, the CDs has uh, seen some stabilization, but the central bank is further taking stringent measures to sustain the marginal gains. Let me bring you details of a statement issued by the BOG uh, today. It says that such violations are punishable on convictions by a fine of up to 700 penalty units or a term of imprisonment or not more than 18 months or both. Bank of Ghana hereby cautions the general public to desist from or from dealing in illegal forex activities as a black mass market transactions, pricing, advertising, receipting, or making payments for goods and services in foreign currency in Ghana without the requisite license or authorization from the Bank of Ghana. The general public is hereby notified that the sole legal tender in Ghana is the Ghana City. The Bank of Ghana, in collaboration with national security and law enforcement agencies will continue to clamp down on illegal foreign exchange operations. All offenders shall be dealt with in accordance with the law. And the Bank of Ghana urges the general public to report any violations witnessed. Let's do some analysis on this. Let's go and zoom and speak to Courage Marte. He's an economist with Data Bank. He joins us. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your time here on joining us today. So uh, the Bank of Ghana is in itself, uh, from the statement, reiterates or refers to an old circular uh, that it, it actually issued on the same issue. Why would the Bank of Ghana continue to fall on this if really it is a, a significant measure? Well, thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon. I, it is a significant measure. I think the problem is that it becomes accentuated or paramount when you find yourself in a situation of a fast depreciating currency. And so it appears like a cause. But in that situation, it can also appear like a consequence because people do that to um, cover themselves from exposure to currency fluctuations. But there is strong merit in what the Bank of Ghana is seeking to do. And we've been there before. In 2014, you will remember, all of these things, there are laws against them. And sometimes you wonder why you have companies operating in an economy, an economy where they know that economy does not control the supply of foreign currencies, mm. yet you price your goods in foreign currencies. What you are saying is that buyers should go source for foreign currency to come and buy from you. And now, I guess the question I really currencies. wanted to ask is, if implementation is difficult, implementation has been a challenge, why do we keep going back to it? And what can we do, really? Well, we just need to keep going back to it to remind people that the only legal tender in, in this country is the Ghana city. Now, you, re you realize that when the central bank tightened city supply, you started seeing some correction in the exchange rate. What then means is that if you stop people from sourcing for foreign currency, when they do not also earn foreign currency, you start to trigger some stability in the exchange rate. Now, what can be done about this? And that, admittedly, it's a difficult area to tread into because you don't have full information about various sectors of the economy. You don't know um, what pricing or what business activity is going on in various sectors. And so it's difficult to track people down. But what I would think can be done is to go down on the roads. For instance, you talk about black market. Yeah. We all know where the black market operators are. And I believe that the central bank can zoom zero on them in the way they have to, because they create arbitrage where people buy low from regulated institutions and come and sell high and make quick profits. Mm. Now, you can also send your officials as on a random check. And once you get people going against the laws, you can scapegoat them and mm. send a strong extend message 
to the various sectors of the economy and businesses operating in that environment. Mm -hmm. You know, but, so I think that these are the kind of spot checks and scapegoating that can help reduce the situation. But, but again, this is not new. And you talk about the black market situation, which the bank says it is collaborating with national security, for instance, uh, to crack the whip uh, on. This is not new. We've been here before. What difference will this really make amidst the challenges we are facing right now? Well, it will make a big difference, right? Because I believe that, like I was saying earlier, all of these things create demand for foreign currency. Because if I need dollars to purchase an item that is priced in foreign currency, that is an extra demand for dollars. Now, that demand for dollars is not supported by earnings from my side. I do not earn forex, but I want forex. And so if you prevent people from pricing in forex, then we all will demand using cities. And then we will be able to restore or reduce the pressure on the local currency. Mm. If you must price in dollars, then you must show that you earn dollars as a business as well. Well, we'll leave it here for now. I'm grateful for your time. That's Karaj Mate. He's an economist with Data Bank joining us on the latest Bank of Ghana uh, notice on the use of the CD as well as the operations of the black market.